you will have you have you will have lot of i'll say other say lot of accountability you will be entitled to lot of things you will have lot of power at your disposal right maybe an organization to look up to you you say left you they look left you say right they look right but you also carry out that leadership is just not having ownership it also about accountability what is accountability by the way when i go to bed every day what are the three things that used to matter to me when i was very young like your age maybe a little more or i mean at that time uh, i just start career if i have done my job right i was happy if somebody praised me i was happy if somebody told wow you can't you have done a magic i was happy that was the youth and like charm of that young age however going forward when i had people reporting into me we i had a certain business which had shareholder responsibility where our business was contributing to uh, shareholders value social value my nights become smaller because from the owner side accountability became more, more important the leadership side of me started coming out now in the mba program what you're going to basically learn is a mix of a lot of things a mix of lot of things knowing that the world is wide world is tough but then so you are dear that you all of have to have be tough to handle it you will have women will have women leaders will have gender bias it's a fact we are fighting every day but it still stays there then in multinational you have geographical and color and bias different type of biases you have to fight each of it and the world is not going to change just because you feel that you are not enough or you have not got a fair share of it so then what comes your ownership and accountability are the two mantras that beat each of them a leader per se whosoever he or she it be may be if he or she has ownership and has accountability beats all the glass ceilings beats all the color and caste and creed and racial bias there you have a barack obama whose name when i remember when i was in us 2007 or 2000 i think 2007 or 8 when he was fighting his first term people used to call him uh, uh, barack obama or osama just to mix his name but this gentleman became the president of america one of the most successful president of america twice because he has two things he was very clear in what he wants to say and whatever he said he acted upon that ownership of saying and accountability of what you say so what i'm trying to tell you gentlemen and women here young people you are at a time when world is truly flat but it is flat for the people who take ownership who drive things who feel that success is with the team and who take the accountability of a failure on themselves without blaming that because the uh, sky was blue and glass was green grass was green so i failed so live you have to live with that you are bought in a time when you will measured against the best of the best of the world for your best performance and worst of the worst of the world for your worst performance you are in a time when there is an internet on everybody's hand your every action becomes global good or bad in a matter of second you are in a time when you leave legacy a digital legacy however you may like it or you don't like it privacy is evaporated it's not gone it is completely evaporated now a leader is looked up to 24 into 7 and don't think that you become leader when you get a job you are leader right now when you are standing there or sitting in the chair and you are sitting in such a iconic institute chandrakut chandrakut institute of management which has the name chandrakut right and i think many of you might must have studied the history of bihar and history of india in that time in the gupta dynasty time modern dynasty time you must and understand that why the name chandrakuta even after it was in 300 bc even in this 2100 ad it is very relevant what is there why are so many names why this institute was named chandrakuta because chandrakuta modern dynasty freed india took on himself big chanakya and then uh, uh, sorry i'm saying chanakya should have been yeah chanakya and chandrakuta both together created this legacy where they freed india from alexander and greeks and all and many more dynasties that was leadership two people 
one guru and one shishya taking on themselves to make a change in the society. So you derive the legacy from there. Then you have Nalanda Institute in, in, in to, uh, to your very close by in Rajkir, where the whole of the ancient civilization scholars, the way people go to Harvard, we will go to, want to go to Harvard or Oxford or Stanford these days. Those times people used to come to Nalanda University or Takshila University, right? That's the legacy we all have to believe in. If you start believing that I am in a Bimaru Raj Bihar, you have lost the battle day zero. I never felt that I am a Bihari, so I have to hide my, I have to hire my kind of uh, hide my uh, where I come from. You have to pick up the thread from the great things that our ancestors, the Maurya dynasty, the uh, Takshilas, the Chanakyas have done. You have to pick the strength from there and then say that now it's my time. I am one of them and I'm going to write my legacy in next 20 years of work or 25 years of work. Right? That should push you that. Now, what does it mean? When I say this ownership, accountability, authority, these all are words that we have created, but it is already taught. We are already seeing it. How many of you see, and I think each of you must see your mom as a great multitasking leader. The first leadership lesson I always got is from my mom. She was my bread. She used to give me bread. She used to ask me to study. She used to take care of me in the emotional side, like a human resource. So if you see a mom in an Indian, Indian family is a multitasking leader, a human resource manager, an operations leader, a, uh, a financial leader, and also advisor to the CEO that is your father or my father at in his time in his time. So you have to derive leadership and accountability from something tangible. What I'm trying to tell you, I'm not giving you an example of uh, like uh, Henry Ford or Sam Walton or uh, Elon Musk. They're enough. You can read on themselves. But will you ever spend in the near future, near future one day with Elon Musk? Most likely no, right? So how will you learn that? You will be having an indirect learning if you go to that. But when I talk about ownership and accountability, look around. Look around yourself, and the first thing you should observe is the people who help you to grow. One minute, just let me see his call. Hello? Yeah? Who, is your, who are you? Ramesh, can I, okay, can I call me? I'm in a meeting. Can I call you back? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, guys. Uh, I also run a business, so there is an okay, accountability to get the payments and all, so cannot miss that call. Sorry about it. But what I was trying to tell you is that the way I derived leadership was, who is the next leader sitting to me? He can be somebody I looked up to, like my teacher, my dad, or my mom, my elder brother, younger brother, whosoever, and derive the basic tenets of leadership from them. And then said that, okay, does it make sense? Most of the times you will find that a successful home or a home, when I say successful, home where mom helps kids, where kids listen and grow up, go to good institute has everything of the leadership that you can think of. Only thing is that that story is not written in Harvard Business School. So what I ask you and request you and humbly tell you that start looking for leadership tenets around you. Say a great teacher, right? Dr. Rana, I know him from a very long time. I and he were together when we got Pratibha Samman from, uh, from an NGO in Delhi. But I, I really respect his courage when he took on himself to go back to Bihar and change some things. It's great leadership. It's like turning around an institution from a place which did not have the things. Similarly, Mr. Kumud, whom I have worked with, known for a long time, he took the CEO position of Entrepreneur CP, hunted me down, and told that sign and come and sign an MOU with him. So this is initiative. This is accountability. This is ownership. I want each of you to imbibe these characters in yourself, day zero. And just not for your studies, but think beyond. You are going to be a leader someday, and I'm sure you all of you must be leading some business organizations or corporate or PSU, whoever, wherever you join. But what is your role? Is your role limited to shareholders' profit? No, not at all. My role is also limited. My role also includes today when I run a startup that how do I contribute to the ecosystem? So what we do, we invest two hours a month to just educate young students from the college. Uh, yesterday, I was in Mysore giving a talk on innovation to a college in a very small college. Uh, it's not IIT, not IIM, 
It's a simple college where students from grassroots come and study. Some of them did not understand my language, so somebody has to translate it into Kannada. But it's my responsibility and my accountability that what I have learned in from like 21, 25 years of career, I have to pass that baggage to somebody, right? Everybody dies. I will, I will also have my end date. But before that, the lineage of knowledge is also my ownership and accountability. So what I'm trying to humbly say to you that find time to do some social work. The institute must have some social club. Take it seriously that, okay, did in your two years curriculum, did you educate one person whose life you transformed? This will make you a true leader, a leader who doesn't need a title or a hat to be respected. So these are the basic tenets that each of us who think that they are leaders, who aspire to become leaders, have to take in themselves. The leadership first role, what is your immediate target, right? My immediate target is to run my family and run the company which I work for, ReadyNet Innovation. You might be seeing that. In seven months, we have grown from zero revenue to today a $5 million company in seven months because every day believes we get up, we, I think about my family, my health, and ReadyNet. The buck stops there. Then I have a social responsibility, as I told you. Then we find out time, okay, ReadyNet should not be very selfish and very like shrewd company. It should have a social responsibility. Then as a CEO, my role is to reach out to external world. So we went to where I go to colleges and I mostly choose. I am on the advisory board of IIT Patna and going to join the advisory board of IIT Ruti also. But I know they are educated places. I go there less. I go to rural places. The kids who look up to me and they don't know what to do in life. So one of the part of me is dedicated to them. And this has been for past 10 years. Before I started this company, I was a senior manager and director with Intel before that. Ericsson, and you can see the list. But I will always find time, two hours to four hours in a quarter, to travel to a place, give lecture, explain them that what it takes to become a good individual, what it takes to become a good professional. So I respect, I request all of you that start start your new new life, a new chapter on the leadership trail with this few, few qualities. One, take an oath that you will never do anything mediocre. We, especially in India and especially in Bihar, we have always been told that you don't do innovation work. Break that, break that stereotype. Do something transformational. What is transformational? Take a case that, okay, if you are working in Bihar, can you do a side project to revive the tourism in Bihar for once and forever in the next three years? Or maybe you do a part of it and pass it to the legacy to your juniors who will come next year? Can you think on that? Can you make Bihar the food and agriculture capital of the world? Is it possible? Yes, it is. Because we are the most, we are, we are the most fertile land in the world, the Gangetic Plains. We throw anything seeds. I come from the area of Begusarai, Munger. You throw something, it grows. So that's one of the tasks I have on my head that how do I transform that place? Right? So that when we come to a time when God is ready to ask us to leave, we see back and we, we think that with our accountability, with our ownership, I have made this place a little better from where I came from. We all took birth one day. I, got, I was born on 12th, 12th October 1973. So my whole task is when I am retiring, I should see Bihar on the, like one of the tasks which I run is Bihar on the plane of entrepreneurship. At least five entrepreneurial ventures, each of them should have an, a minimum of 100 million valuation and 50 million, 25 million turnover in the next five years. That's the goal I have. That's why we created, I think, uh, uh, Dr. Rana and Kumud know Kare Keba. Kare Keba is a Bhojpuri word. This means Karna hi hai. This, we, started this, we started this initiative and CNP is a part of it to promote the entrepreneurship in Bihar because we know that if I don't take care of my home, which is Bihar, nobody else will. That is accountability. That is ownership. So I want each of you to think a little beyond. And first thing, empower yourself. You are at a great institute, believe it. Moment you think you are not great, nobody's going to believe you. So first you have to cherish yourself, relish yourself, and feel that we are best of best of the world. Feeling we are the best of the best of the world, then comes your, what can I do for this world? What can I do from the institute? Can, as a batch, in two years, the institute is transforming me into an MBA candidate. All my life, I'll carry this degree. Each of you will carry this degree. What will you give back to the institute? 
institute, you have given fees, that's fine. But can you give something legacy? Can you do a project which CMP can always talk about? That, okay, the badge, uh, class of uh, 2022, when it joined, this class was different. It came as a group. It created a project or a, or, or, or a case or whatever you want to say, an initiative, which still sticks, which still people look up to and talk about it. That's the legacy I want each of you to try. When you do these things, young students, you are the leader the moment you have started it. You have taken on yourself to transform and make something better from where you have come. That's the part of leadership. Any leader, when he or she joins an organization, the first thing we do is to create a 30, 60, 90 plan. 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. A leader has to show a transformational journey in 90 days. Otherwise, you have lost that new touch. So for you also, I'll say, create your 30, 60, 90 plan. That includes your academics also, by the way. Don't, don't start plunking into the subject and say that the you told me that subjects were not important. No, I'm not saying that. I have been a very good student all my life, God being, God being kind. Now, but I don't restrict myself only to the like academics and all. I will take care, I will take interest in the society where I live. I will take care that, okay, can I help two people? Can I, if I were you, I will help at least one person every year or as a group, 10 person every year and 20 person whose life we will transform in two years. We'll write a case study and I'll tell you a story. When I applied for the executive program in IIM, they asked me what is so different in an interview that what is so different in an interview? You know what was so different? How does God give us back? 2008 Bihar was like struggling with flood. We 20 volunteers from uh, uh, Bihar, Biharis who were in Bangalore. I was much younger that time, I, uh, like much, much, much younger that time. We sent one ton of food, uh, milk powder from Bangalore to uh, uh, some, some village in North Bihar. And two villages survived on, this, on that milk powder for three days. When I explained the story, narrated the story in my IM interview, believe me, the professors who were taking that stood up and clapped for me. And I was lost. I never wanted anything back, but this was God's way to compensate or give me or reward me for my karma. And you won't believe in the 800 students, out of 800 participants who were asked to, who were applied for this job, applied for this position of executive program, only 12 were selected. I was ranked one. And they told me that this is what we look at. We don't look at that you just do something and academics and there are a thousand people in software world and 150 in IITs. What's the differentiation? These are the things. These are the leadership things that I want you to talk about. So when Kumaji told and uh, everybody told, I told, I'll definitely talk to you because you are one of me. You are like my nephew, niece who are studying somewhere. If I don't tell you those stories, you will hear and something you may believe, you will not believe. So I want my heart and my mind to come to you and expect that each of you will make it better than what I have. That's my goal. That's as a, we can say as a virtual guardian or a virtual mentor. If I'm able to inspire you that you take it forward to a level which is beyond my, beyond my, my karma, that's what the success is. You know when Dr. Rana will be most happy? When he introduces some of you telling that he is my student who is the CEO of somewhere or a head of it somewhere. And he has done so much work that I'm so proud of you. You know? The teachers, I remember my teachers when I got into IIT, they told me, now I am very proud of you. So take a vow that when you came to this place and when you leave this place, you met a CMP little better than what it was. Take a vow that 10 people in your life who, 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 who came in touch with you when you joined CMP and you left, when you will leave CMP, their lives you transformed. Take a vow that personally when you came to CMP and when you're leaving CMP, you become a much more matured and better professional than you were there. And for and the other important thing, friends, my young friends, never crib, never complain. Power is amongst ourselves. God is kind. Everybody gets 24 into 7, 24 hours, a day, no more. Either it's Elon Musk or a small person like me. We all get 24 days, 24 hours in a day. Out of which, whatever hour I want to sleep, whatever I want to use for my like leisure, and rest I work. So it's very kind of God. Everybody gets the same thing. We work almost in the same organization in state of internet. Knowledge is not restricted to some, some universities now. It is on internet. It is in our hand. Use it. 
but reading is just not using it. Make that knowledge applicable, executable. That's where the word called chief executive officer, which I am. I can talk about it, but if I don't execute, I will not get the result. So my third lesson to you is be an executioner. It's okay to be wrong. Um, I have been wrong many times and I have been told that you are wrong. I told, yes, I humbly accept my mistake and learn from it. Today, yesterday was Guru Purnima. The quote which I wrote on Facebook was, to my every endeavor, especially to the failures who taught me most in life. Because every failure takes a little bit of sleep out of my life and thinks me that, what did I do wrong? Then that, that loop tells me that, how could I have done better? And next time I'm better. So young friends, never shy away from doing things. Do it. If you are successful, you will know it. If you are not successful, you will know it, accept it. Then make it better from that time. Never pass the buck. The worst leader is who passes the buck, who says, because of this, I failed. Then he should not have been leader. That because should have been the leader. So in my third lecture, third one point which I wanted to tell you is, with all the glory and grace and grandeur of Bihar and Chandrupta and Maria comes a lot of responsibility. If you want people to look up to you from the angle of that they look up to Lord Buddha or Chandukta or Chanakya, you have to match up to that level so that the story goes on. Otherwise, I come from the time when Bihar has a very dark period, 90s, when I had to leave Bihar and I didn't want to leave actually. I, I was in the United States and I came back saying that I want to serve my motherland. My motherland primarily is India and Bihar. So I want each of you to take this message forward. Transform yourself internally. Believe it. Not, not just because Devanshu told, no. Devanshu can come and go. Many people can come and go. Focus on your strengths. Make it more stronger. Question yourself. The idea of to speak out is very, very important. The third, when you say something, account, be accountable for that. Measure your progress. Measure your failures. Measure your success. It's okay to fail. As I always say that there is a saying that fail fast. I say fail fast to succeed soon. Moment you have failed faster, you can succeed sooner because you know what went wrong and you can fix it. We did it. That's why in seven months, we are today uh, probably a 35 crore company. We started from zero, right? A bit 10 people. We got selected by Startup India. We got funding from through two VCs. And you won't believe this is the process. When I started this journey, I have 100 people who said to me, Nick, you don't know this is not going to work, I have security. Today, all of them, some of them have become investors in my company. And some are telling me that how can they work with me together? So don't, don't get carried away with somebody who says no. The people who says no are limited by their limitation, not you. Everybody could have said no to me that how could it be possible? Why are you leaving a job in Intel? You are a director. You have 70 people reporting to you. You only work five, six hours a day and you get all the going. No, I want to do something different. That was Intel giving me that Divyan Chu is a senior manager in Intel or director in Intel. That's great. Intel is a great company. The founder has got a Nobel laureate, but Intel is not my company. That's where my entrepreneurial spirit kicked up. That's why I told you, okay, let me take a stand instead of preaching entrepreneurship. Let's go and practice it. The first action of the leader is practice before you preach. Once you have practiced it, you know that what, to, what will go wrong, what will go right. So practice before you preach. That's my last question to you. So uh, uh, how much time we have? I think we have another five, take five minutes and tell you some of the softer side of leadership. <laughs> So uh, to each of you, uh, I'll share, stop the sharing now, uh, probably just to show you this is, uh, okay, uh, hold on, uh, let me go to a different slide where I tell you which my company is. This is my company, uh, ReadyNent. These are the three founders and you can see the growth from 2022 when I started thinking about the product. Today we are close to, uh, to our third, but uh, valuation is around $5 million, God being kind. We do small things. We just protect the devices in your home. And we have customers such as three biggest airport in India. Then we have customers like best hotels, all in seven months. Okay. So uh, just to give you that, yes, it is possible. This is a little bit of glorious page here. Uh, our uh, PO, uh, MOUs and then uh, the, where we were recognized by Silicon India magazine. Then we were recognized by Startup India, so on and so forth. I'll stop here sharing then so that we can talk better are you able to hear me completely yes or no 
Yeah, house is open for discussion. Students, yes. Questions. Please ask questions, and I will measure your courage and the impact of my talking if you ask me five questions. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Sir, I believe that you are the co-inventor of three patents. Yes. Truly fascinating. Can you please tell us about them? So, okay. Again, my first two patents came when I was almost of your age, much younger. I could think more. I can do a lot of work myself. I was United States and I was struggling with something with the way older laptops have something called hard disk. They used to break very soon. I told this is not going to work. I have to change it. So we created something called magnetic RAM, MRAM. That was the first magnetic, uh, memory, magnetic memory, which could not break. It has a life of probably like 20 years. So when, and I was much younger, so I did not start that venture. We gave the patent out to a company, got some money, good money, and then we were happy about it. So first two patents from, came from here. The third patent came when I created this company. I told, how do I protect this company? The ready -ment. So when we devised a new way to understand that how a CCTV camera is hacked, and it can be hacked from anywhere in the world, we got a patent out of that. So the third lesson is a leader also protects the business the way you protect your family. So you have to think about it and what does patent do? Patent helps me to be a step ahead and keep my competitors away from my business. Did I answer the question? Yes, sir. That's truly inspirational, sir. Thank you. Sir, good morning. Good morning. Say your name. Uh, so I am Piyush Harsh. Mm -hmm. So your company Redinant deals in cybersecurity. Yes. So how can a management professional with a non-technical background fits into your organization? So it's simple. There are two aspects of everything. If you can't manage it, if you can't measure it, you can't run it. Technology is only one part of it, right? But technology is the foundation. On the top of that, every management principle applies to us. Economics of scale, pricing, how do I manage the company operations? How do I uh, do strategic acquisition or how do I start a strategic business? So whatever you are going to hear, the Michael Porter's five forces, what you are going to understand about the operations, economics of scale, pricing model, how is the geopolitical events impact my company? This all applies to us. So for that matter, any, or any business has to have a management, right? Because you have to manage the business. End of the day, I am not a taxpayer's money-fed government lab. I'm not ISRO or NASA. Okay, ISRO is a great one, but I'm not like some other labs which only can spend taxpayers' money. I have to earn the money, do R&D, make money, make my shareholder, myself, and everybody in my company happy. So any business for that matter has to have business professionals, and that's where they are fit in. Thank you, sir. So you also mentioned about providing opportunities to college students. Mm -hmm. So hope uh, we also expect some opportunities. Of course, yes. of course. Why not? You are like my pro from my home. Of course, why not? Thank you so much, sir. So one of you can spell out your ambition. What you want to do in after two years? Be brave. Be loud. Especially some girls should should talk about it. That's your inner courage. I want each of you to feel that. That yes, this is my ambition and I want to go for it. Go ahead. Good morning, sir. I have a question for you. What's your name? Sir, I am Amrita Anand. Hi, Amrita. Yeah, go ahead. So, so uh, I want to know, uh, there have been many situations in which uh, you had to accomplish a task with some resource constraints. So how, how do you deal with that being a leader? Okay, very good. So I was asked this question in my, almost a similar question in my IM interview. And I remember the answer which I told. Say that Divyanshu, you are five, they told me Divyanshu, you are five feet, eight inches. 
probably that time I was 75 kg. Now I am 85. That's a different thing. And if you, I asked you to eat an elephant, how will you eat? That was the question they asked me in the IM interview. So the limitation was my small mouth, right? How can you eat an elephant? I start telling yourself one bite at a time. So whenever you have a resource constraints, prioritizing the things become very, very important. Okay. And then getting the thing done without having to do the rework is very important. So how do you do a big task? Always break the task into smaller pieces, then see what is your today's priority. It doesn't matter what it is. And I still, as a college stu like student, believe that one bite at a time, you can accomplish any task in the world. Okay? Does that answer your question? Thank you. Thank you. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah. How to convince an uh, investor to our startup? Name, 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 name. First uh, name. Viswajit, Viswajit, sir. Viswajit. Okay. How to convince investors? Yeah. To our startup, sir. It's very simple. I'll tell you. It's very simple. It's not complex. First thing is that the investors looks at two things. The way we look at putting the money. If I put my money one rupee in a business, will it give me 1.2 or not? Right? So when you talk about business to investor, when you talk about an idea to investor, he should see a future in seven years. That what will this business become in seven years? Will it become a unicorn? Maybe. That's the story I'm telling. Right? After this call, I'm talking to Bharat Innovation Fund, the billion dollar fund. And uh, they want to some invest some money with us. Just after this call at 11 o'clock, 11.15, I have a talk with them. For three hours, they are going to evaluate me. I'm going to do exactly what you have told me. I have to tell them a story. You see, I am small today. I am also very cost effective. You can get a piece of me probably for $5 million or $3 million, whatever valuation comes out. But your this money... Because of this, this is what we are doing. And we are operating in such a big market, $20 trillion market, 20 trillion to $2 trillion market. So your this $5 million will become $100 million in seven years. That's what investors like. But they are going to quiz you. That's the homework part you have to do. So for every investor, think that if you were the investor, why will you have invested in your company? Not because you need money. You need money. Investor doesn't need money, right? He has to give you money. Why? So if you are in his shoe or her shoe, you have to think, why will you put 10 rupees in that business? The first product we created, he told me, did I, will I buy it? I told yeah, I will buy it because I want to keep my home secure from getting hacked today. They told, okay, that's the first proof point. So anything you do, first evaluate that, dissociate yourself from that project and say that if you were an investor, will you, would you have invested 20 rupees or 100 rupees or 500 rupees on that? If you get that answer right and write in the piece of paper, don't become emotional. Just write facts. You will get that answer. Just put, articulate that fact in a little better way to the investor. They will like it. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, great. A very good morning, sir. Good morning. Your good name? Yes, sir, my name is Shubham Shaurav. Mm -hmm. And my question is, um, you know, what are the standard criteria to uh, assess the critical uh, surveillance infrastructure according to uh, resident uh, innovations? There are many, Shubham. Uh, it starts with operational security that how was that CCTV camera put up? The passwords were easy guessable. The network stack has something which could have been hacked. Then we go into much detail on something called surveillance protocol called RTSP. Then you have WebRTC, so on and so forth. Then we look at a lot of backdoors or vulnerability which companies from China had all known, knowingly put that. So it's a huge complex software, uh, but it's not complex at a top level, but uh, yeah, detail, devil lies in the detail. So if you take any device, as I told you, how do you eat an elephant? You break it down. 
So when we took CCTV camera or another IoT device for that matter, like energy meter, we don't know what actually is energy meter. Break it down. Break it down to the level of user interface. Break it down to the level of protocols. Break it down to the level of external interfaces. Break it down that how a hacker will see that. And since I come from that deep background of cybersecurity for 20 years, odd years of experience, that threat modeling and all, we do it every day. So I could understand that. And then I also could see that this, there is no product in the world right now with it. So we became the first one in the world to get a patent and God being kind, couple of orders within like 20 days of the launch of the company. Thank you. Yeah. I have one more question. <laughs> Could you please enlighten me a little about OEM agnostic scams? OEMs are original equipment manufacturers. Like you have, who are the manufacturers of CCTV camera? You have a CP plus, you have a Dawa, you have Hikvision, you have Axis, right? Just a minute. Hello. Yeah. Calling from? No, no, no. So sorry, some some crap, uh, prank call. Yeah, let's say like some uh, sale call. Anyway, uh, wrong, yeah. So uh, these are the original equipment manufacturers. We manufacture who manufacture the equipments. So we said that we don't know which people will buy which type of camera. So there is certain common denominator. Test it out. So that's where we became brand agnostic or OEM agnostic. We doesn't depend upon which brand of camera you have, but the certain functionalities and weaknesses are inherent there. We'll find it out for you. On the top of that, we have another brand related test that we do that. Does that answer the question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, this side I'm Professor Santosh Kumar. Yes, sir. Yeah, I have one question. In the last, in the last four or five days, I have got two queries, one from the student side and another from the SCST UR startups. Mm. The query is same. What the student says, 70% mm. of the startups have failed. Mm. The day before he started, in the same startup class, some of mm. the startup or the entrepreneur says mm. that 97% of the startups have failed or they have the similar future. Yeah. The other side, if you see, the government is very thrilled. The government yes. is very enthusiastic. Yes. They have pumped a huge amount of money to the extent yes. of 500 crores. Yes. How do you see the restructuring in the future? See, I will tell you, if when I, I studied in a place called Baka in Bihar, right? And 90% of the class ended up being at auto driver or something like that. But I always realize that I'm not in that 90% in top 1% in India. So it always is finally the strength is inside. I always tell you that. There is a macro thing. There is a macro thing that everybody can, will become poor or everybody will die. But there is also a thing that I am a survivor. I know I'm a survivor. That's why I tell you that gaze your strength from the past. What Steve Jobs said that connecting the dots looking back. Because there are more failures Fail, failing people you will meet in your life than you meet successful people. That's also the fact statistically. Yeah, yeah. And they will tell you their reasons to fail, not tell you why they should not fail. <laughs> so I have always been like that. So they told that IIT Jana Mushkilo Tamal ha Mushkil to Hazar Tabito Jaro. So you have to take in yourself. Second, this is the best time to do startup in India. Best. There could not be an, this is like a gold rush, golden period. That's why you have 100, 300, 500, 10 unicorns coming out. One unicorn is a billion dollars. 75,000 crore of valuation has happened so soon, right? So believe in that positive side of story. Every day the sun rises. Believe in that when the sun rises, you also rise. Arise, awake and stop not till the goal is achieved. Vivekananda. I used to write it in my wall when I was a student and I still write it. So believe in yourself. Don't go with the naysayers and fail. They failed because they were failures. I'm not. Can we have a standing ovation for this timid speaker? We have <laughs> delighted emotionally or intellectually the entire class. Yeah. I'll also stand with you guys. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, believe in yourself. You all are very tough. So am I. And we will fight it out. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for spending time for CIMP at Leadership Lecture Series. I'll convey your message to Director Dr. Rana Singh and Kumuchi. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate okay. it. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah.